Hello everyone. Today I'm going to introduce our work, New Techniques for Pairwise Symmetry Breaking in Multi-Agent Pathfinding. This work is recently published at ICAPS 2020. The multi-agent pathfinding problem we are given a graph and a team of agents, each with a start and a goal location. And we are asked to find collision-free passes for the agents while minimizing the sum of their travel times. There are many algorithms for solving this problem, and CPS is one of the popular algorithms for solving multi-agent pathfinding optimally. It works as follows. It first plans the shortest path for each agent by ignoring the collisions, like these two paths. It then checks for collisions. Here, the two agent collide at location A at time 1. It then resolves this collision by saying either agent 1 cannot be at A at time 1, or agent 2 cannot be at A at time 1. And in each case, it generates a trail node with a new constraint and replan passes satisfy the new constraints. Then CBS will repeat this procedure by choosing one of the trail nodes and uh, checking collisions again. So it will traverse this high-level tree in a best first manner and terminate when it finds a node with collision-free passes. In last year's AAAI, we introduced rectangle symmetry for four neighbor grid multi-agent pathfinding. In the rectangle symmetry, the two agents have multiple shortest passes to reach its goal locations. However, every combination of these shortest passes has a collision inside the yellow rectangular area. So, to get a collision free passes, one of the agents has to wait for one time step. But CBS has to try many combinations of these shortest passes before it realizing that one of the agents has to wait. In this work, we introduce another two pairwise symmetries. The first one is corridor symmetry. It happens when two agents want to travel through a narrow corridor in opposite directions at the same time. These are the shortest paths for the two agents. They collide in the middle. Then, if CBS asks Agent 1 to replan, Agent 1 will simply uh, wait for one time step and enter the corridor again, so they will collide at location B at time step 3. If it asks Agent 2 to replan, then Agent 2 will simply wait for one time step and enter the corridor again, so they will collide at location C at time 3. So eventually, this will be the final tree generated by CBS. It contains 16 leaf nodes at the last layer, and only the leftmost one and the rightmost one contain collision free passes. And if the size of the if the length of the corridor increases, the size of this tree grows exponentially. Another symmetry is called target symmetry. It happens when one agent has already reached its goal locations, and later another agent travels the goal locations of the first agent. For example, here, agent 2 reaches goal location at time 1. Then, at time step 3, agent 1 reaches the goal location of agent 2. So they collide here. If uh, CBS asks agent 1 to replan, it will simply wait for one time step and then collide with agent 2 again. If it asks agent 2 to replan, it will find a set of collision free passes. But unfortunately, the cost of this set of collision free passes is larger than the cost of the passage in the left trail node. So to prove the optimality, CBS has to first expand the left trail node. And this will be the final tree generated by CBS. In this work, we introduce reasoning techniques to detect the corridor and target symmetries efficiently. We propose a new branching method to resolve these symmetries in a single step instead of generating such a large tree. And we also prove that our uh, reading methods can preserve the completeness and optimality of CBS. Now let's look at some results. Here, RCT represents rectangle, corridor, and target reasoning respectively. The figures show the percentage of soft instance within one minute, so higher is better. We can see that both corridor reasoning and target reasoning improve the performance, and the combination of them performs the best. If you are interested in this work, please refer to our paper for more details. And thanks for listening.
Hi, I'm Dor Atzmon, a PhD student at Ben Gurion University. This research is called Generalizing Multi-Agent Pathfinding for Heterogeneous Agents. This is joint work with Jonathan Zaks, Einat Kiviti, Lidora Vitan, Jonathan Morag, and Ariel Fellner. The multi-agent pathfinding problem is defined by a map with n locations and a set of agents, each with a start and goal locations. In this example, the start and goal locations of the green agent are A and F, and the start and goal locations of the blue agent are e, D and E. At each time step, an agent can either move to an adjacent location or wait in its current location. The task is to find a path for each agent such that the agent do not conflict, while minimizing the sum of travel costs. Here, we can see a possible solution for this example. In time step zero, both agents are at their start locations. Then, the agents move to location B and H. At this point, one of the agents must wait to avoid a conflict and only the blue agent moves. The agents now move to locations C and E. And then, only the green agent moves to its goal location and a solution of cost seven is achieved. Multi-agent pathfinding is applicable in many problems, such as traffic control, robotics, and video games. However, in multi-agent pathfinding, the agents occupy only one location at each time step, while in reality, agents can have different sizes, and thus they can occupy more than one location at each time step. There were two important attempts that did not make this one agent per one location assumption. In multi-agent pathfinding for large agents, the agents occupy multiple locations and collide when two agents overlap. Each agent is represented by a reference point, for instance, the upper left corner. In this example, the agents conflict at time step T because when the reference points of the agents are at locations A and B, then both agents occupy location C. In this problem, the agents cannot rotate or change their size. In K-robust multi-agent pathfinding, the agents may experience up to K unexpected delays. Thus, the agents occupy each location for multiple time steps. In this example, the two agents conflict as both are planned to be at location C and the difference between their time steps is less than k. In this problem, there is, there is an, an assumption that the size of each agent is only a single location. The classic multi-agent pathfinding problem is extended by multi-agent pathfinding for large agents for agents of different sizes, and by k-robust multi-agent pathfinding for agents that can, that can be delayed up to k times. In this research, we define a new problem, generalized multi-agent pathfinding, that generalizes both of these variants of multi-agent pathfinding. In the generalized multi-agent pathfinding problem, we have the following new definitions. A state is a list of all occupied locations at a single time step. And the transition function gets a state and returns a set of M states. Each is a state that the agent reaches by performing an applicable action. In generalized multi-agent pathfinding, each agent gets start and goal states instead of locations and a transition function. And the task is to find a state's path for each agent instead of location's path. We can easily generalize large agents. The state of each agent is defined by the location it occupies at each time step. Here, the state of the green agent contains locations A, E, C, and F. Generalizing K-robust is less intuitive. The state of each agent is defined by its current location as well as its previous K locations. Here, the state of the green agent contains locations A, B, and C. Conflict-based search is a commonly used multi-agent pathfinding solver. First, it finds a path for each agent 
from its start location to its goal location. In this example, the path of the green agent is A, B, C, and F, and the path of the blue agent is D, H, C, and E. Then, conflicts are identified. Here, both agents are at location C at time step 2. To resolve the conflict, we split the node to two child nodes. In the left node, we have a new constraint that prevents the green agent from occupying location C at time step 2. And in the right node, we have a similar constraint for the blue agent. At step 4, we replan each of the constraint agents. Finally, we perform a best fair search on the constraint tree and expanding, for example, the left child. As it is conflict-free, it's a valid multi-agent pathfinding solution. For large agents, multi-constraint CBS was suggested. Notice that when the reference point of one of these agents is at location A, B, C, or D, then the agent occupies location C. To resolve this conflict, either the reference point of the green agent cannot be at location A, B, C, or D at time step T, or the reference point of the blue agent cannot be at these locations at this time, st time step. For K-robust, KRCBS was suggested. To resolve this conflict, either the green agent cannot be at location C at time range T1 to T2, or the blue agent cannot be at location C at this time range. We propose GCBS for generalized multi-agent pathfinding. In this example, both agents occupy location C. This conflict can be resolved by imposing an occupation constraint. An occupation constraint prevents the agent from occupying a given location at a given time step with its entire shape. Here, the state of either the green agent or the blue agent cannot contain location C at time step T. Using GCBS, we can impose an occupation constraint to resolve conflict between both large agents and K-robust agents. While the definition of an occupation constraint is simple, it resolves conflict in the same manner multi-constraints and range constraints resolve them. We ran experiments on 30 by 30 grids with 10% obstacles. The size of the large agents in this experiment is 3 by 3 cells. We can see that both algorithms MCCBS and GCBS almost achieve the same results in terms of success rate and planning time. We also performed a similar experiment for K-robust agents with K equals 2. Here also both algorithms KRCBS and GCBS performed similarly. We talked about generalized multi-agent pathfinding and saw that both large agent multi-agent pathfinding and K-robust multi-agent pathfinding are special cases of generalized multi-agent pathfinding and that GCBS performed relatively close to MCCBS and KRCBS. Future work can suggest policies for selecting conflict to resolve and can adjust GCBS for the case of probabilistic environments. Thanks for listening.
Hello, my name is Roman Bartak, and this is a joint work with Jindri Kodrashka and Jiri Švancara. I'm going to talk about solving a multi-agent pass finding problem, which is a problem of finding collision-free passes for a set of agents moving on a graph. At each time, either the agents can move to a neighboring node, or it can state in the node where is it right now. At the end, each agent should be in its destination, and there should be no collisions between the agents. There are several types of collisions. Some of them are derived from physical properties of agents, meaning that two agents cannot be at the same time at the same location, like the edge or vertex conflict. Other type of collisions or conflicts are just virtual conflicts, like the following conflicts. Agents cannot follow each other, or cycle conflict. Agents cannot move on a cycle. A special type of a cycle is swapping, where agents swap positions using a joint R. In this talk, we are focusing on modeling the multi-agent pass finding as a planning problem, specifically on modeling the various type of collisions. You may believe that modeling the problem is quite simple. We just need to encode the move action using preconditions and FX. This is an example of encoding in PDDL language. Then we obtain a sequential plan of move actions, and we can group these actions into parallel steps by assuming actions of different agents not sharing the same node in the same step. Like in this case, where color describes the move actions of a specific agent, we can split the sequence of move actions into subsequences, and these subsequences are for different agents not sharing the node, so they can, done, they can be done in a single parallel step. So in this model called pebble motion model, we naturally encode edge, vertex, and swapping conflicts. If we want to allow them, we just need to modify precondition of the move action. But what about the following conflict? Following conflict is not allowed, but if we do polarization, where we allow actions that are describing the train in the same parallel step, we may allow trains in the model. But this is not possible for cycles, because in cycles, the actions need really to be run in parallel. Fortunately, we can model cycle by splitting the original move actions to two actions, where agent first moves to the arc, and then it moves from the arc to the other node. Simple, right? But this is not a correct model because it may lead to plans that are not invalid, like in this one. The red agent moves in the arc, and the green and black agents are using the end nodes to reach their destinations before the red agent finishes its move. So we need a more advanced model. We call it a sequential model where we combine action splitting with node freezing. Agent freezes the node which, which is want, where, where it wants to go. Uh, this is not possible for cycles because that node is occupied, so we need an additional mechanism for cycles where agent is requiring the node from another agent, in, which means that it's actually pushing the agent away from the node. Like in this example, where the black agent requires the node from the blue agent, which then requires the node from the red agent, which requires the node from the green agent, and finally the green agent can move to an empty node. But this node can be used by other agents in the meantime, so we need to lock these agents, so only these agents can use these nodes at the same time. It's a quite complicated model, but it describes the idea that we may force the agent to do the action. So we propose a different model, which we call a layered model, where we use a token passing mechanism to force agents to do actions. And the agent, which is assigned to the token, can do the action. We still use action splitting, so in the first round, each agent moves to the edge or states in the node, and in the second round, the agent moves from the edge to the next node or state in the node where is it right now. So it's easy to parallelize the sequential plane obtained using this model because this plane consists of a sequence of layers, and each layer describes opening and closing actions for the agents. So the multi-agent plus planning can be general, can be solved easily using these parallel steps. So how do these models compare? We use the problems from Moving AI library and we use the FF Planner to solve them. For comparison, we use the PyCat solver as an ad hoc solver for multi-agent pathfinding. And this is the result, the number of problems solved within a given time. Surprisingly, the Pebble model is very good, it's much better than the ad hoc solver. Sequential model is not very is not that good, but the layered model is still comparable to ad hoc solver. So in this talk, we present how to model multi-agent pathfinding as a planning problem. We believe these models are useful by themselves by proposing techniques like action splitting, node freezing, and token passing. We use a very simple mechanism to parallelize the sequential plan. So the open problem is if we can do better parallelization to obtain plans with smaller make span. And that's it. Thank you for your attention.
from multi-agent pathfinding to three-dimensional pipe routing. This is joint result with Wenbo, Maria, Daniel, Sven and Shinrui. We talk about pipe routing in the context of chemical process plants. Then we adapt prioritized planning to this problem and conclude by experimental results. The plant layout design problem is a complex problem by itself involving many constraints which probably known only to engineers which are hard to formalize and that's why it takes several years to design a process plant. It takes several teams of engineers. This process is iterative and very much heuristic and uh, in stake are billions of dollars. That's why it's important to have good solutions for this problem. This is a special case of the so-called special packaging problem. The, uh, the whole plant layout design problem in the literature is typically separated into two phases. The first phase is equipment allocation and the second phase is pipe layout. So we typically accept the equipment layout from phase one and then we do pipe routing. So this is phase two we're looking at. And the pipe routing problem we consider is a simplification of the practical problem. We consider only access parallel segments, which is mostly the case in practice. We don't consider branchings of the pipes, which would lead to a Steiner tree problem. Uh, sure, we need disjointness from other objects. We consider uh, support and elevation costs. And these are constraints and the objective function is given by uh, material costs and the bends and uh, construction cost of supports. We don't consider operational costs. So we use a single pipe solver from the literature. It's, it considers a routing landscape given by a set of cuboid obstacles as you see in the picture. Each pipe is defined by start and end points called nozzles which also give the direction how the pipe exits uh, the equipment and we uh, also have support zones where the pipe uh, is uh, can be supported. We also have uh, all the other data like the diameters of the pipe and minimal separation distances and uh, various costs and for so this problem for a single pipe is solved by a general optimization model it has uh, the primary decision variables are the positions of the bends so for each pipe uh, you have uh, start and end points and then uh, the route is defined by the bends so in the model we have uh, parameter which is the maximal number of bands and then the model selects which uh, how many of them are actually used and the constraints uh, the main constraint is disjointness of the segments of of the pipe with uh, equipment and with other segments of the same pipe and the disjointness constraint is modeled as a logical disjunction between inequalities which uh, express separation of uh, of the objects along certain coordinate direction and we require orthogonal direction change at each bend. This model was implemented in MiniZinc which is a general purpose model lang modeling language allowing translation of a model to several solving technologies and Solving this model is slow, which requires can require several minutes per pipe. 
but the advantage is that such a model allows general site constraints and compared to practical solving process this is actually faster and so this was for one single pipe now we actually have several pipes and we need to, to somehow route them in a conflict free way so state of the art for pipe routing to do this was a so called fixed order approach we uh, construct a list of pipes in certain order for example by non increasing cost approximations and then we route pipes sequentially and uh, each routed pipes pipe becomes an obstacle for the remaining ones now when we come to multi-agent pathfinding which is in, in its classical version is an abstraction of, of many problems including pipe routing and the robotics so a problem a path or a solution of multi-agent multi pathfinding is a set of collision free paths in uh, XYT space so X, XY is a two-dimensional path but uh, it is the movement happens uh, along the time so you have XYT and the similarity to pipe routing that you have paths in XYZ space but here we also have a more geometric constraint such as pipe diameters and all other things and if we look at conflict resolution methods from MAPF then uh, what we do with uh, setting priorities for the pipes was called prioritized planning and there is a recent algorithm called priority based search uh, which tries to exhaustively enumerate enumerate the priority orderings so what it does it it looks at it first constructs some some uh, individually optimal paths for each path and then uh, it, if there are any conflicts then it tries to branch by prioritizing uh, one or the other uh, path and that way it creates a conflict tree and this is called the upper level of the algorithm and then in the lower level we actually plan the paths now the whole thing is suboptimal because you you don't know which paths you look at so uh, to construct a globally uh, optimal solution you might need to have actually uh, uh, suboptimal paths for each pipe and we adapted this algorithm uh, as branch and bound so uh, we don't stop after the first feasible solution we continue searching to trying to improve it and uh, we also try to cut off unpromising branches and we also allow incomplete solutions when some pipes fail to be routed and we also looked at two heuristics well PBS is a heuristic but uh, we looked at two algorithms which can be called even more heuristic and one is the randomized three starts which is sampling of the conflict tree so we do randomized dives down the tree uh, to which was done iteratively and the other one is large neighborhood search which we call hill climbing so we take a feasible solution and then we reconstruct some part of it and there are various, various uh, versions how we can construct a feasible solution and we come to experimental results we have five synthetic test instances which were constructed with the purpose of having dense uh, allocation uh, of obstacles in the in the landscape and also many pipes so the routing uh, the whole routing procedure would have it hard and so the three examples in the end have each 23 pipes and each the, the same set of obstacles but they differ by the layout of the obstacles from phase one and we also have two industrial test instances 
uh, the left one, the acid gas removal unit, has 66 pipes, and the right one has 200 pipes. And here is the data on the examples, the number of equipment pieces, number of logical obstacles such as maintenance access zones, number of pipes, the bounding box, the density of, of space, space occupation, and the maximal runtime per algorithm for each instance. And we use uh, MinZing242 as the modeling environment and the MIPSOLA Guru B9. For the uh, measurement of algorithm performance, we look at two criteria. One is certainly the total piping cost, but the other, probably even more important, is the number of successfully routed pipes and in in the bottom plot so but we express it by the number of missing pipes and they are the number of missing pipes is given as a difference to their independent solution independent solution means where each pipe is routed individually optimally and we see that for example the fix order algorithm, the previous state-of-the-art algorithm, uh, for this instance obtains a solution with four missing pipes. And there is uh, another algorithm which is hill climbing which starts from that fix order solution but it manages to improve uh, the number of successful pipes actually down, down to complete set. And all other algorithms have uh, more successful pipes, but then even uh, smaller total cost. So the total cost is expressed as a gap to the cost of the independent routing solution. Then a similar plot for the first industrial instance, the, uh, our the previous algorithm, the fixed order, finds a solution with two missing pipes and all other algorithms improve that. They can successfully route all pipes and improve the cost. And for the big industrial instance, similar picture. In comparison between the algorithms, we can see that they, uh, for example, the enumeration algorithm, the PBS, it takes longer to obtain solutions, but it uh, has better results in the end. And as outlook, uh, what remains to be done, we can look at path coordination algorithms, which already exist for MAPF. In this case, it is important to reuse supports uh, for by several pipes. Uh, we should also uh, look at allocation of equipment and pipes simultaneously and actually the pipe routing is a Steiner tree problem when several pipes are connected by junctions and yeah, this is an important problem uh, playing with billions of dollars so uh, we hope this would be a new research direction for the MAPF community.
Hello everyone, today I'm going to introduce our work, Moving Agent Information in Congested Environments. This work is recently published at AMAS 2020. Learning passes for multiple agents is an important problem for many real-world applications. Sometimes, we need to not only move the agents to their goal locations, but also keep them in some formation while they are moving. For example, when you have a group of drawings, you might want them to stay close with, with each other and keep some formation so that they can maintain a good communication network. Or when you play a video game and have a group of soldiers, you might want them to stay in some formation so that they can better protect themselves. However, when the agents need to go through some congested regions, like this narrow corridor or this forest, they cannot stay in their desired formation. Instead, they have to compromise their formation temporarily and get back to their desired formation only after they left the region. In this work, we propose an algorithm that addresses this problem and trace off the formation and the travel time of the agents. To formally define the problem, we are given an undirect graph and a team of agents, each with a start and a goal location. We define the formation as the relative locations of the agents. We define the formation deviation as the minimum sum of steps required for the agents to move from their current formation to their desired formation when ignoring obstacles and collisions. This formation deviation captures how close a formation is to the desired formation. And our task is to find a set of collision-free passes with a small mix band and small sum of formation deviations over all time steps. Now let's look at our algorithm Swarm Map Path. Swarm Map Path combines the idea of multi-agent pathfinding from artificial intelligence and formation control from robotics. It first chooses a leader among the agents. The idea here is that we want to choose a leader such that if other agents follow the leader's path, the time steps when they have to compromise their formation is minimized. For example, if we choose agent 2 and if this is its path, then we check every location along this path, whether the other agents can stay in their formation or not. For example, if agent 2 is here, then if agent 1 and 3 want to stay in their desired formation, then agent 3 will collide with an obstacle. So we call this a formation blocking location for agent 2. Similarly, if agent 2 is here, then agent 1 and 3 can stay in their desired formation without colliding with an obstacle. So this is not a formation blocking location for agent 2. We use a number of formation blocking locations to evaluate how good a leader's path is. And we choose a leader among the agents whose path has a minimal number of formation blocking locations. After the leader is chosen, we then partition the leader's path into segments. Assume this is the leader's path. We mark the formation blocking locations on the, on the path in red. And for each red part, we call it a congested segment. For each remaining part, we call it an open segment. We know that for each open segment, the agents can stay in their desired formation without colliding with ob obstacles. So we simply ask all agents to follow the leader's path in the desired formation for the open segment. For each congested segment, the agents cannot stay in their desired formation. We therefore call a multi-agent pathfinding solver to plan collision-free passes with a minimal mix span, so that the agents can pass through this congested segment as fast as possible. We concatenate the passes from each segment and then we will, we will get the overall solution. We demonstrate our algorithm in a simulated game environment. The agents are initially in their desired formation. We assume that there is a player who updates the goal locations every 12 time steps. We simulate for 212 time steps. And among these time steps, uh, the agents are staying in their desired formation for 113 time steps, and the agents are now staying in their formation for 99 time steps. We found 19 congested segments in total, and it takes us 1.13 seconds to plan these passes. If you are interested in our work, please refer to our paper for more details, and thanks for listening.